Today we'll look at how to optimize the number of ribs on an oil pan. Here I have an oil pan CAD model that has expressions that drive the number of ribs in the oil pan. I've also created additional expressions that allow the optimizer to put in a real number for the number of ribs which will then be rounded in order to come up with the actual number of ribs. So here I've put in 3.7, it rounds it up to 4, and there you can see 4 ribs are now in the oil pan. I've also assigned names to the mount holes on the oil pan. So here if we select the face and then properties, you can see there's a name holes on that face. That will allow us to more easily select those holes to assign a constraint later when we build our simulation model. So here we'll create our simulation models. We'll create a linear static solution. And we'll begin in the idealized part, creating a mid-surface representation of our oil pan. First we'll get our associative copy and then we'll mid-surface. The automatic algorithm in the mid-surfacer selects two face pairs. I only want one. And I also want to make sure that we're getting all of the tangent faces. So if the number of ribs changes, so will our mid-surface. So here I've selected the tangent faces for our side one and our side two faces, making sure that we're also getting the flange with the holes on it so that we'll get one mid-surface body. And that single body should also have a consistent surface normal, which will assist in ensuring a consistent element normal when we go to mesh. So here, let's bring that mid-surface into the FEM, and we'll create our shell mesh. And I'm going to mesh the body, not the faces, so it's just a single select for the body. So if the number of faces change, so will our mesh. So now that we have our shell mesh, let's go ahead and take a look at the properties on the collector. And you can see that we're inheriting the material from the CAD model. We haven't assigned a thickness in the P-shell. Instead, we're putting it on the mesh-associated data, where we're going to inherit it from the mid-surface. Here I'm going to select the option Average Feature Thickness, since it's all one single thickness. And here we can check to see what that thickness is by plotting the contours of the thickness. All right, one last check is for our element normals. Let's make sure that they're consistent because we're going to be putting a hydrostatic pressure in the oil pan. And that looks good. All right, so let's go to the sim. And this is where we'll assign first our constraints. And I'm going to select those constraints using the name selection. Earlier we took a look at how we put a name on the holes, and here if you don't have that name selection you can turn it on right there in the menu. Then we'll select the holes, but we have to make sure that we're going for edges. That's where we want to assign our fixed constraint. So now if we look for holes, it finds the edges that have that hole attribute assigned to it. And there you can see our fixed constraint has been applied to all those holes. Next we'll put on our hydrostatic pressure. We'll select all of the tangent faces inside the oil pan. And then we'll specify a vector in the direction of gravity. And then also a point on the surface of the liquid. Next we'll assign a liquid density. Here we'll select one for oil, which will be 850 kilograms per cubic meter. Then we can also select our gravitational constant. Here we'll put in 1g. And we could also assign a surface pressure. I'll leave that as zero. Here we want to make sure that our arrows are pointing in the correct direction. And it looks like they are. And we can also plot the contours of our hydrostatic pressure. All right, that looks good. Let's continue by doing a test solve to make sure that we've got everything set up correctly. 
Also, we want to make sure that we have Keep Open turned on in our solution monitor if the solution monitor is being opened as part of our solution. That will assist in more efficiently running our optimization. All right, so here we can see our displacements were a little over five thousandths of an inch and right in the area where we're going to be adding some ribs. All right, so to optimize our number of ribs, we'll select geometry optimization. We'll select our initial test solution. We'll begin by defining an objective, which will be to minimize weight. Then we'll specify some constraints. Here we'll specify a result measure as a constraint. And we want displacement magnitude. We want to find the maximum across the entire model and we'll call it max disp. Here you can see that value currently reflects what we saw in the results, which was a little over five thousandths of an inch. All right, so we want to specify an upper value of only five thousandths. We don't want it to exceed that for our displacement. And then to achieve that goal, we'll modify a design variable. Here we'll select an expression from our original CAD model, the oil pan, that rib opt expression that we took a look at earlier and we'll allow it to vary between five ribs and one rib. All right, and lastly, we can specify the maximum number of iterations we want to allow the optimization to use to arrive at its goal. All right, so now we're ready to solve. I'm going to pause the movie while the optimization solution is running, but once it completes, it will open up the optimization spreadsheet. Here we can see how the optimization progressed in terms of how many ribs it tried and what the resulting maximum displacement was. So here we can see when we've got four ribs, we're under the five thousandths of an inch. There you can see also the objective and the rib opt design variable and how they were modified as they progressed through the design cycles. So here we can take a look at all of the results beginning with design cycle 0 which is where we had two ribs in the model. And here so we can see a real displacement relative real displacement in the model. We'll select absolute with a scale of 100 and then we can animate across our design iterations starting at design cycle 0 through design cycle 4. So here we can see graphically how the displacement varies with the number of rips. SimCenter 3D accelerating the process of innovation.